that crying on the internet about your breakup would lead to so many gifts. Not to mention I got my rent paid for the month. I came home to the most gorgeous bouquet of flowers. Dear Hallie, sending you lots of love and light right now. Hope these brighten your day. You got this. XOXO, Shelby, and your friends at Benefit Cosmetics. As Miley Cyrus says, I can buy myself flowers, but now I don't even need to because Benefit Cosmetics sends them to me. I got a call and my doorman was like, Hallie, your cake is here. And I'm like, I didn't order a cake. I'm fucking screaming. The cake just says, you're hot. I always used to be so curious about what influencers would get for free. And now that I actually get PR, it genuinely shocks me sometimes what I get in a week. So I'm gonna show you what I got this week. Starting out with Instagram. This box actually weighs 30 pounds and it's huge. This is amazing. It's this whole box of makeup and skincare. Ah! Everything that you see on this page. Next we've got Set Active. A lot of brands really like to personalize their packages for you. So like they made me a little student ID with me on it and like a superlative. And then lots and lots of workout clothes. Mario Badescu. I feel like this is literally every product that they make and I'm so excited. Brennan Blackwood. I screamed when I opened this. It's like furry and I'm in love with it. Brand My Mom Made It, which I know you've seen on your Instagram feed sent me the cutest loungewear. I can't wait to wear it. Love the packaging on this one already. And it's a cute leather purse. Conair. It's a blow dryer and I already know I'm gonna be finding these purple things all over my house for like weeks. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Omaomi aka Petit Diva and in this video we are talking about the realities of being an influencer. Now a lot of people, uh, when they think of influencers, they think of a lot of PR, packages a lot of money a lot of brand trips a lot of things now in this video we are going to analyze the nitty-gritty of the life of an influencer or a content creator now this video is inspired by a particular lady who is a content creator slash influencer who reached 100k on tiktok and she was talking about the fact that she has reached these milestones and had successful videos but she's not getting the perks that she thought would come with the kind of success she has had on her page now let's check out what she had to say and let's check out what people had to say about her complaints on her situation okay so i hit a hundred thousand followers this week right and i have several videos that have over millions of views several I even have one video that has over a million likes. With that being wow. said, my life has not changed not one bit. That's my life so. has not changed financially. No one recognizes me in public. I do not have these big brands trying to hit me up and shit. Now that I'm at the caliber that I am in regards to my following, it makes me look at other people with the caliber that I have in their following. And... A lot of people like to portray themselves as like, oh, it'd be crazy to me. It'd be crazy to me. When I see people that are like, oh, I have 50,000 followers, so I'm going to move to LA and be a content creator. Where are you generating income in that? What is you moving to LA going to do? What is you moving to Houston going to do? What is you moving to these big market cities going to do when everybody's out there doing the same thing? Everybody has 50,000 followers. Everybody has 100,000 followers. Everybody has that because it's not that hard to generate in today's society. Going viral is so easy on this app. Yes. And even then, why would you want content creation to be your only source of income? That's so unreliable. Your following could be here one second and gone the next. You know how easy it is to be canceled nowadays? But this is That's on social true. media. Now people see all these influencers li doing their big ones, living their best life out in, you know what I'm saying, in LA or they're partying in Dubai or they're, everything's fake, y'all. Everything is fake. They broke too. And then cars are either rented or leased. Them clothes are returned to the store right after they get the pictures and videos of them in it. And them houses be Airbnbs. I... At the end of the day, it's okay to have dreams. So if your dream is to become a content creator, then do that shit. Post your content, stay consistent, and pray that you gain a following and that your content creates traction. But at the end of the day, we need to be realistic with our dreams as well and have backup plans. Because a lot of grown-ass adults end up homeless, end up struggling, end up posting motherfucking GoFundMes because they moved to a big-ticket city thinking that they was going to be somebody's Addison Ray, and it turned out not like that and now they're struggling. So let's just be realistic with the goals that we have for ourselves because a lot of people get their feelings hurt when they see the social media and what it's like in real life. I hit 100,000 followers this week, right? 
with that being said my life has not changed not one bit oh i kid you not this was me at 50k i was like where are my brand deals where is my red carpet rollout 50 000 followers where's the money that everybody is talking about but then now that we sit at 99.8k followers i got a little bit to tell y'all and can we celebrate just a little bit i know it's not 100k but can we take a shot to 99.8k hello 99.8k y'all please if i had to public speak in front of 99.8k people I'd rather jump off a bridge and do a flip. I'm not gonna lie. True. <laughs> Cheer, cheers to 99.8k. Oh god, I've had so many people's eyes on my mm. Going viral means nothing nowadays. You can go viral. You're not getting on the Ellen Show no more. You're not getting nothing but a pat on the back from yourself. Cheers to me for going viral. Cool, what do I get? The same life that I have now. It's not changing anything. But what I have learned from 50k when I wasn't making anything to now almost 100k and I'm seeing the money roll in, I did niche down. When you're building a personal brand, you got to be a little bit more strategic about it and you got to mm -hmm. be more who am I talking to when I get on here? And I'm targeting somebody. Same thing is to just make sure that you're having fun. Do not stress mm -hmm. it too much because it's going to come to you eventually. You're going to find what is for you. It took me a little bit, but here we are. Now I'm not all over the place. I'm kind of just like, okay, this is what I like. This is what I could talk about all day long. Yeah. This is who I'm talking to. And now you get brands reaching out to you. You really just have to build a personal brand. You got to be marketable. And one more thing with these vlogs, especially on YouTube, when you're starting out and you want to vlog, honestly and truly don't nobody care about your life. As I much had as that. Doing. A lot of people want to start out like, this is me, this is my life, this is who I am. Nobody cares. And that's not to be rude. It's the honest truth. Unless you live a very aesthetic, luxury life, nobody cares because you're either here to inspire, educate, or entertain. That's inspiring. People want to have that, so they're going to follow that immediately, even if this person just came on the scene. I'm not trying to tell anybody not to start out vlogging, but if you take anything away from this video, this is just a part, a small piece of how I do my research go on YouTube look at the big youtubers go back to their oldest videos and look at how they used to do their true, content true. lots of tutorials lots of how to and mm -hmm. then you see the vlogs because That's people now true. care after you giving me all this valuable stuff and you giving me something now I care a little bit about what you got to say outside of doing your makeup mm -hmm. and we gotta just do one more shot for the road because I'm so excited and grateful and happy and grateful and thankful for almost 100k thank y'all so much for being here with me hello come on Uh -huh. my life has not changed financially no one recognizes me in public I this is not the reality of every influencer and i think people Too also have to start to learn the difference between an influencer and a content creator oh as an influencer, you have influence. People will buy things because of you. They will go places because of you. As a content creator, you just make content that people maybe can relate to or they find funny, entertaining, things of that sort. And some content creators do also have influence, but in this big world of content creating and influencing, influencers in that term are the ones that is going to get paid the big brand deals whose lives are going to change who people are going to recognize in public more so than just someone that's just a content creator okay you can be an influencer and a content creator but not every content creator is an influencer i hope this is making sense oh and no shade to this creator that i stitched because after i looked at her profile i saw that she could really be an influencer i think right now she's more in that content creator realm but i literally can see the mommy blogger vision that's gonna bring in a lot of money and that's gonna propel her to be like these influencers she's talking about but i think it is so extremely harmful to like get online and just be like every influencer you see that looks like they got money a good house a good car they're making it they're faking it like it is not real like that is so harmful and so untrue take me for instance i'm a full-time food and travel influencer people wouldn't know the amount of money i make from brand deals like the income i'm bringing in or anything like that if i didn't share it with them and i do this to really show people that like you can be an influencer in a niche that's different than lifestyle or beauty and things like that and you can still be successful oh. now granted i do live my life well within my means so i'm not going out there buying the newest mercedes getting like the big high-rise condo and all that stuff though i could and i feel like if i did that stuff and i was more showy then we would have people kind of like in this dish saying like how's she making that money like she ain't got hundreds of thousands of followers like it must be fake it must be smoke and mirrors you know what i'm saying when in reality it wouldn't be it would just be me <laughs> reaping the fruits of my labor you know what i'm saying 
granted i do agree with her when she talked about like these influencers going out moving to these big cities and stuff just because they gain a little following that's Doesn't not financially sense. smart but if you are constantly bringing in a certain amount of money each month from influencing going to a bigger city where it's more prevalent is gonna do nothing but that's skyrocket true. your career honestly but it's not for everyone and everyone can't do that so that's when you just have to know yourself and dig deep before making moves like that Mm -hmm. but the moral yeah. of the story is the realities of being an influencer is not everyone's reality it looks different for everyone just because you have a whole bunch of followers and you aren't seeing brand deals and people aren't recognizing you in public doesn't mean that next influencer that has the same amount of followers as you isn't getting recognized in public isn't getting thousands of dollars in brand deals me with my following that once again isn't huge have gotten recognized in multiple states i've traveled to you know what i'm saying so it's definitely like possible it's doable it all comes down to who you are and who your content is reaching honestly so yes being recognized and also once again getting thousands of dollars in brand deals like yeah so if you are an influencer in the making just keep going don't be discouraged because you think like you're gonna do all this work gain these followers and not get anything from it because if you do the work the right way and you build a niche i'm gonna just tell you on this video right now having a niche is one of the biggest ways to make a lot of money on social media period you build a niche you build a loyal community and your content mm -hmm. is good like amazing and a brand goes to your page and can see them in your content you you will make money you will be fine but that's it i'm getting off my soapbox i hope somebody learned something <laughs> from this video i would love to hear y'all's comments and thoughts in it so yeah i would talk to y'all later love you bye my life has not changed financially no one recognizes me in public I okay so if you haven't seen that um content creators video she pretty much was just saying how like she has all this following now and she's not seeing any benefit from actually having the following she also was saying how like she feels like most of the creators that do have the following now that she's experienced it is most likely like faking their entire life and there's this famous quote i don't know who it's by but i've heard it plenty of times and it pretty much says when life hands you lemons you make lemonade I feel like this quote is really good to apply to this specific situation. So let's say that the lemons are the followers and the lemonade is the monetization of the followers. Just by having the followers is not enough to make you money. Crazy part is that influence isn't always necessary to make a bunch of money. Like you don't need a bunch of lemons to make lemonade. You really only need one. The fact is that you can't make lemonade just by having lemons it's not enough just to have the lemons have the if you just have the lemons and you just have them sitting around and you're not putting them to use eventually the lemons are going to go bad they're going to deteriorate and they're going to be um, you're not going to be able to use them anymore that's the same with this following even if you're on the growth of just building your following and that's all you're worried about is having your following understand who you are building the influence building the cult like following that is still growth that is still progress in your outcome of getting your lemonade and that takes me to the next subject of her mentioning how some content creators could possibly be faking their lives one if that if there are people out here that are faking their lives which i'm sure that there are that is also their prerogative because we're in a world where we are blessed with the decision to create our own realities but outside of that, I believe that some people, especially people who want to create content professionally or be an influence, understand that aspect of creating content is that you are building a following, you are building mm -hmm. an influence, and you are building people who want to be able to relate to you in whatever way. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a one way is right type of relatability sure. because this world is infinite so the same way that i have a thought about one thing there are millions of people who have that same thought but there are millions of people who have a completely different thought about the next thing and that's why everybody is so unique so i guess the point is do what it is that you're going to do with your lemons in order to be fruitful and whatever that is you don't even have to make lemonade you can make a lemon cake you can make a lemon pie so it's not necessarily a one-way thing of how to do this but just understand that the seeds mm. that are sown into you and the things that are given to you for creation it is now your turn to multiply that and bring abundance to your life the blessing has already been put in your hands so now it's time for you to turn that blessing into something else but it's solely up to you 
Mm-hmm. And looking at anybody else's blessings and trying to figure out how they're doing it is only going to take the attention off of your blessings and how you can multiply and bring abundance to it. When you decide to take the attention off of that, you stagnate or deteriorate what is already given to you. And it happens because we're human, but this is just your reminder to put your eye back on your prize and grow it as much as you can. This is your time to do it. You have everything that you need to do it. And for anybody who is growing their following, um, this is a part of the process. So enjoy it. Okay, so um, that was quite insightful. Now, one of the people that replied, the original creator, talked about the fact that there's a difference between content creator and influencer. And I think I'm beginning to understand. Right now, I think I'm more of a content creator. I'm not an influencer because I just create content. I don't influence anybody to do anything for now. Based on my content, my content is just to um, analyze the situation and talk and um, just share what I think about some things. Now, for me, um, I don't consider myself an influencer now if i begin to do lifestyle um content and i begin to share things that i use and i have a community that trusts me based on my previous content and then and they begin to um trust me enough to try some of the things that i use and get some of the things that i use or some of the things that i mention then I think that's when I become an influencer. Now, from what they're saying, I didn't really check out the original creator's um, um, page. But from what the second person is saying, it seems like she's more of creating content, but not like talking about brands or things. So brands are not like seeing her as an influencer. Now, someone in the comment mentioned that it's true that not everybody's experience is the same that she she had like ten thousand subscribers or followers and brands were already reaching out to her so it's possible that our content was more influencing and then the brand saw that as part of what they wanted to um, work with so if she saw that second creator's video i think she should actually look into how she can put influencing part into our content and maybe that would bring um the brand deals that she's looking for any which way there are other realities to being a content creator or influencer so let's check out some people's opinion about what goes on behind the scene Sorry I'm late. I kind of didn't want to be here today. No, like seriously, your girl has been so over socials lately. Everyone acts like being a content creator is just like the perfect job and it's all sunshine and rainbows. And honestly, it's not. Here are my harsh realities of being a content creator that I feel like nobody talks about. I have been having like the biggest anxiety lately. A lot of my videos have been doing well and I feel like if I can't make another video that's way better than the last video, then I won't make any content, which doesn't make any sense because there's ebbs and flows to everything in every industry. Like some of my videos will get like a third of the engagement that the last one will and I'm like, oh, the end is near. I guess I'm close to retirement. And I'm noticing people are expecting more of me and they're expecting to be entitled to my time. So the other day this girl DMs me and I see the DM pop up or whatever, but I don't have time to respond, so I go about my day. Then I get another DM from the same girl, and I'm like, oh, this could be a continuation of the last DM, whatever, go about my day. Then the next day I get an email, which I check my emails every day. I rarely check my DMs. And the email is the same girl telling me about how she's DM'd me multiple times and how I haven't responded, so I'm being rude, I'm being disrespectful, and now she doesn't want to work with me because I'm not the person that I portray myself to be on the internet. It was a lot email and this is not the only time that i've had this i've had this happen about five times just this month alone and we're not even going to talk about the amount of spam dms and emails like the fake brand deals the fake sugar daddies the people who want to paint a picture of me like i don't even get that scam you want to be an influencer until y'all realize exactly what y'all gotta go through oh my god i want to quit my nine to five i want to live that life let me tell y'all something most of them influencers are dead ass lying and i know because i live that life i'm not saying i'm a liar though like i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep it real g for 
out from my players out there. One, I'm gonna start with the brand collabs. Definitely not easy to get. I already know the scam ones that be like, oh my God, DM for a collab, babes, don't answer that. The platform that I really like that helps me with, with collabs is called Aspire IQ. Chef's Kiss, okay? Or Incense. I done did everything in the book. I done emailed. I done, I done titled the whole thing. Don't even waste your time with that. I promise you they don't care. Keep it short and cute and send a little media kit and they'll get back to you. Now when it comes down to like payments, please, please don't be like, oh my gosh, since this influencer charged a thousand dollars, I could charge a thousand dollars. No bitch. You only have 1,000 followers, girl. Relax. You were not that girl yet. And I'm technically not a small creator anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> there be brands out there that be trying to ask me, do I want $50? Offer me $50. That's not even paying a phone bill, babes. I could go to all these and get a snack, bitch. My whole point is that brands like to play with you. So that's, that's one life of an influencer. When you're first starting out, don't nobody care what you're doing. I promise you. I'm sorry. You got to do a trend. You got to follow a trend. That's how people are going to start knowing who the fuck you are. Don't start. Don't try to be different. Like, day in my life, don't nobody know who you are. Don't nobody care. Don't nobody want you. Don't nobody need you. People are going to start becoming envious of you. Start following you, being weird. This, that, and third. Babes, I've seen it. And y'all think influencer life is not a 9 to 5? Bitch, you're right. It's not a 9 to 5. It's a 7 a.m. to 3 in the morning. I be busting my ass in here. And then to the girlies, I be getting free wigs like it's candy. God bless y'all soul. Because I have... I have oh, let me show you these packages. I have six brand deals that I have yet to finish. Because I'm stressed. I'm stressed. He talks about the truth behind being a content creator. I've been feeling down lately and it's directly linked to the fact that my job is on social media. Think about it like this. Let's say you work in a corporate job. You go to the office, you do your job and you come home. That time is now for yourself. When your job is on social media, you don't get the luxury of clocking out. So your job is 24-7. More importantly, a lot of the time we measure how well we did that day by how viral a video went. Now there's actually science behind what I'm saying. Dopamine is the chemical that makes you feel good. When your videos are performing well, you get constant high surges of dopamine. Let's say that one day your videos don't do well. You're not getting that dopamine. And when we don't get it, we beat ourselves up, we tell ourselves we're not good enough, we compare ourselves to other creators, we become addicted to this virality. It's so difficult when your livelihood and your job is based on numbers. Because unfortunately, it is a numbers game. I feel like this is something that a lot of us content creators are struggling with. For the past few days, I've been working so hard, I'm not attaching my self-worth to numbers. I'm super hardworking, I produce good content. Those are the facts and truth about me and they don't change if my videos don't do well. I will say it's very humbling experience. I remember the days when it felt incredible when I got 10,000 views on a video. And here I am today getting hundred thousands of views on my videos and still feeling like it's not good enough because it didn't hit a million. It's so messed up. You have to remind yourself at the end of the day, my job is to produce quality content for my existing followers, not to hit the for you page and gain more. Such an eye-opening experience for me. We need to start talking about this more. These are the reasons that made me decide to stop being a full-time influencer. The first reason is that working as an influencer, your income is just wildly inconsistent. And if you're someone who likes predictability and consistency when it comes to your finances, that just makes this job incredibly stressful. The thing that I could just not accept was that 95% of your job as a basic influencer is to push one, overpriced into unnecessary and meaningless product that really doesn't enhance anybody's quality of life and you're doing all of that in the middle of a recession and when the cost of living is astronomical and the average person is having a hard time affording the basic necessities and i just could not with that additionally there's this unspoken standard that influencers are held to that brands are not and that is especially apparent when it comes to the fact that influencers are without a doubt expected to uphold their end of the contract without leniency more often than not especially when it comes to delivering the content whereas brands have so much more leniency and there's not that expectation and as a byproduct of that you can go months without getting paid for your work usually the brands are overdue and sometimes they don't even pay you at all another thing that i had a really hard time with was the fact that more often than not influencers are expected to have either no values or forego their values for the sake of a relationship with the brand or the check that you could or might get 
and I just, it felt icky, it felt wrong, and I just, again, didn't fuck with it. And the final piece that really put it over the edge for me was the fact that in order to stay relevant and to continue creating new and different content, you have to buy things even if you don't want them or even if you don't really care. And I just hated the mindless consumption that usually is attached to being an influencer because one, it feels disingenuous because you only bought it because you needed something to share with your followers and to get new followers. And two, it just contributes to buying all these things and just f***ing up the planet. These days, I am still creating and posting on social media, but I have not accepted a brand deal since October and posted one since November because I felt that it was more important that I take a step back and reevaluate my approach and my place in this industry and on social media versus making a bag. These are some things you definitely didn't know about being an influencer or a content creator. I did not know these things. I used to think that influencers sat around and looked pretty all day and literally did nothing, but that is not the case at all. Number one, it is a lot of work. For me at least, I post two TikToks, an Instagram reel, 10 Instagram stories, an Instagram post every other day, a Snapchat post, I repost everything onto Pinterest, I update my analytics, I have auditions almost every single day because I also do acting, and I respond to as many comments as possible. Content creators are self-employed which means I don't have benefits. So if I need to go and get like my teeth cleaned, I have to pay to get my teeth cleaned. But it also means if I buy makeup or if I buy clothes, I can write it off. A lot of people who used to hate you in the past will show up in your life and try and use you. Some of your favorite 15 second TikTok videos actually take hours to make. We actually read our Instagram DMs. So when you DM us mean things, we see them. Thank you. Some of the things that the creators have mentioned include um, checking of views and that one, I don't know if I would say I've reached that level where yeah, I'm being bothered about a reduction in views. Now, personally, for my videos, which is weird, um, YouTube has this thing, I don't know, my maybe YouTube is fighting me or something, or YouTube is, I don't know if YouTube is against me, but for my videos... Um, the first 24 hours to 48 hours, I usually don't get like a lot of views. I get between 20, 40 to like 100 views. And then like after two days, it kind of takes off for maybe like 24 hours. So whatever views I get within 24 hours, um, that's what I will get. And then it just stops. So before, previously, my average if it does that because not all videos that will do that there's not all videos that will experience that kind of um, growth some within 24 hours 48 hours if it's 100 it's 100 it stays like that for weeks if you check my playlist you will see that i have a lot of videos probably like 20 or 30 videos that the views have not reached up to 500 um but there are some that have passed that so i get between 1000 to like usually my average my highest was like 2600 views and it comes within maybe three to five days after the fifth days nothing happens now i got a video i have a video that has done over 30k views and because i was so used to the video my video is not doing beyond two six two five when he when i saw the views at three thousand i did not know how to act i do i was not happy i was just like is there something wrong i honestly said is there something wrong this doesn't make sense that's what i said when i saw that video do three thousand then i saw it do five thousand and i'm like is there something wrong again and then i was expecting it to actually stop the honest truth is when the video reached 5,000 views, I was expecting it to stop because it was typical of my videos to stop um, moving, the views to stop moving for the algorithm to stop pushing it. So me seeing 30,000 views and seeing this video get views every day for more than 15 days after I uploaded it is strange to me. I'm grateful for it. 
but it's just strange so for me a lot of people saying they get views and then when the views stop they be like is it the end me i have not experienced that kind of thing right now what i'm experiencing is i'm already used to a certain level of my videos doing certain amount of views so i just look at it anytime i upload the honest truth is anytime i upload it so my mindset is that this video will just do highest to six views i don't really look at it doing 10 10 k views 20 k views 30 k views i hope and pray but i don't put too much attention on that once i see it moving um after two days if if the views begin to move i'll be like okay it's about to get to 2k views or 3k views so my stop at 1k my stop at one two in the next 24 hours 48 hours and everything ends so when i see a video do more than two six i'm like is there something wrong but for people that are used to having hundreds of thousands of views millions of views when they see something like 10k views on one of their videos uh, they begin to um get anxious they'll be like oh is my channel dying and if it happens to like three or four videos they begin to panic because another thing with content creation and influencing that they also mentioned the fact that your income is not stable and it can give you anxiety if you're used to a particular lifestyle if you're used to a particular amount that you're earning like say you're earning ten thousand dollars in a month and a particular month you earn three thousand the next month you earn two five the next month it's not up to five thousand you begin to panic now if it is being stable you will be like oh that's okay but with content creation and influencing your income is not stable so if you're someone like that likes that stability content creation and influencing might not be your best choice for your main hustle so if you want to do content creation or influencing and you want it to be your main hustle like i said in one of my other videos you have to diversify your income so you have to have different streams of income so that no matter what each is bringing a certain amount to you and um together will help to maintain your lifestyle so, um that's one thing that um people um should know about um content creation and influencing now like i said i'm not an influencer at this point in time because i'm just creating content now for me my own um plan or hope is that when i make my videos whenever youtube releases me from this is algorithm jilt um if i get a, to a point where my videos on an average are doing like twenty thousand to fifty thousand views um anytime i upload um, i should begin to add a little bit of lifestyle content where i talk about things beyond talking about issues and just showing things that i do outside content creation and in that case if those videos if i have a community that trusts me and watch those videos and trust what i say i would begin to show a lot of things that i use not just to get brand deals but just to share what i do or use or something and with that kind of videos i know that i can be an influencer and i can be approached by brands now i will not be doing those videos just to be approached by brands it would be nice to have brands approach me and uh, have some sponsored videos to augment my income made from content creation or influencing but I want to do it because I like to share some things. I do. I'm not someone that likes to keep things, so I would love to do that. But I know that I don't have the community yet to do stuff like that. So I am just limiting myself to content creation for now. I want to build my community and build my channel. So personally, I don't look at my subscribers. Um, count and think i should be getting brand deals because i know that i'm not putting up content that brands will love so 
that's my own reality and that's just what i wanted to say about this whole content creation influencing reality now i don't know what you guys think about the whole reality of influencer and content creators um if you are not a content creator or influencer was anything that they said anything that the creators said um surprising to you do you um, think some things that are being said are being over dramatic of people do you have any wish to be an influencer or content creator and this video has kind of inspired you or kind of demotivated you i would love to hear your thoughts about it um are you a content creator are you an influencer was any of the thing that was said in this video something that struck a chord with you did you do have you ever experienced any of it i've experienced the burnout i've experienced a lot of things that i was saying so i would love to hear your own thoughts about it and what you did to overcome those such situation so please leave your comment in the comment section so that we can get this discussion popping now if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you are not yet subscribed and you like videos such as this please consider subscribing by clicking on the red button to say subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell notification icon by the side so that you're notified anytime i upload videos now with all that said thank you so much for watching i hope to see you in the next one bye